Shadowly, everybody, this is going to be my first mass headphone review in probably over a year. Ever since Google screwed up my YouTube account by uh, putting a whole bunch of comments through without my approval and various other infractions that they did. But anyway, to the headphones. Uh, first off, just a few uh, little amps here. This is the uh, Oppo HA2. This is not the addition to of the two. It's just the original HA2. And uh, it's a good DAC amp that's uh, supposedly ready to go for iPhones and maybe even um, you know Android without having to have the camera adapters. Here are a couple of camera adapters. There's the normal size, and then there's the double size, which people say sound better. You plug your USB device into here, and you're ready to go. Uh, and one of those USB devices might be, uh, like the Dragonfly Red, take in and pull the cap off of that, and uh, put the little guy into here, plug this lightning connector into your iPhone, and you're ready to go. You could even use a um, one of those uh, little jitterbugs in between here if you thought that might help the signal. So there's another uh, AudioQuest Dragonfly Red, another DAC amp. This is 200. The Oppo was 300. Of course, Oppo has nice deluxe cover and some other things, bass switch. And this is a um, amp only, no DAC, and it's the um, a real high quality one from. Uh, Lehman Audio, and it's called the Traveler. And um, anyway, it's a plain headphone amp. This also is a plain headphone amp, but about one tenth the cost. This is the PA2V2 by Electric Avenues. I think they're out of Canada. Uh, $70 or something like that. Uh, I don't know if they even make it anymore. But um, anyway, just a plain headphone amp, and uh, it's not bad. If you have a good deck like the uh, Dragonfly, you could add that on. It might. Uh, mellow the sound out or something and uh, let's see what else we got oh yes I have another little gadget here now on the um, one of the headphones here I have a uh, little attachment to the cable which looks like this this is what comes with the iPhone 7 because they don't have a headphone jack and uh, inside this little gadget since it goes into the digital port and the digital port has no analog audio out this thing actually serves the purpose of a uh, DAC and headphone amp. And uh, this little guy here um, from FIO, the i1, does basically the same thing. Uh, you get your headphone input down here, if we can see that. And then we have the uh, lightning connector on this end. And do we have any controls in here? I can't remember. Controls are supposed to be. Ah, it's right there on the box. Right there on the box is the uh, stop, start, and up, down. So if you have a uh, wired headphone cable and it doesn't have the controls on it, this will add controls. Uh, but this is made only for the lightning port. I don't know if they have another version. So in other words, this does the same thing as this. I think this one sounds better, but uh, who knows. But, you know, it's putting a lot of stuff into a small place, with, uh, especially with this uh, little Apple gadget, because it does have to serve as a DAC and an amp, which is pretty amazing. Uh, now to the headphones. We have got, and by the way, you can use the, uh, like the Dragonfly and the Oppo on uh, computers as well as on, um, you know, handheld devices. Here we have the uh, Beats EP. And I uh, covered up the Dr. Dre stuff on here. And uh, but anyway, there's a BTP. And uh, what can I say about the BTP? Maybe what I should do, so I show the different headphones, is show the uh, EQ curve I did on it. Um, here's the one on the EP, which looks like uh, this. You know, that doesn't really work all that way. I think I need to show the uh, this screen right here. So uh, I actually boosted the lower bass a little bit, around uh, 30 hertz, and uh, cut the upper bass a little bit, which is kind of normal for uh, beats. And then uh, in the treble, I had to raise the area around 3 kilohertz just a little bit. And then uh, there was a um, some, uh, major suck-out right around... Uh, 
seven to eight, seven kilohertz, which is really unusual because uh, most headphones have a peak up there. So this is kind of the opposite of a lot of other headphones. And by the way, you don't have to have uh, great ears to hear all this stuff because all you have to do is compare. And once you have your references down and everything else, you can compare and see where the differences are, as long as you can hear. So uh, there we go with the Beats EP. Actually, the, uh, if I were buying a wired Beats headphone, this is all I would ever need, $129. It sounds as good as any of the other ones that they have. You know, somebody could argue that there's better detail on the other ones, the bigger ones, but I don't know. You know, really, uh, you're not going to get a Sennheiser 800 in the Beats line, so, you know, whatever. But it does sound darn good, with equalization, of course. Here we had a Bayer uh, DT 1350, and I have placed upon here the uh, uh, T51P ear pads, which are very soft, nice, good for isolation, all kind of other things, even improves the sound slightly. But the uh, original 1350s, and they're, even their facelift version, the ear pads are horrible, just horrible. The sound isn't that great. But it's detailed because it's Tesla drivers. Um, so anyway, that's the DT1350. I've had four of these suckers. And uh, two of them I put the... Uh, I, I never got the original um, pads off of there. But the last two I did, and I got the T51P pads on them. And uh, boy, what a difference that made. So uh, I'll show you the curve on the uh, DT1350. It ain't good. But let's see if we can do this here. And there we go. You know, I've got this brightness up too high, I guess. Here it isn't registering real well, so let's turn it down just a hair. Come on, brightness. Back to here. Let's see how this works. Oh, much better. So as you can see, it curves pretty ragged. We're looking at about, uh, some cases, maybe 12 decibels, 13 decibels difference, plus or minus 7, maybe even worse. Um, not great. But anyway, uh, it, it's also ragged with the original ear pads. Plus, they don't they don't do anything. They're horrible. Here we have uh, Sound Magic P55 Vento, and uh, I really like the build of this thing. It's really great, real high quality. Except for one little thing, the uh, headband keeps popping out. Uh, well, anyway, when you wear it and stretch it a little bit, the headband uh, pops out right here the uh, top part and everything else and I had to put it back together otherwise it rubs against my head but otherwise a very well built headphone kinda heavy metal uh, super soft squishy ear pads really great kinda pretty much a round ear for the top and sides of my ears but uh, of course it sits over top of the earlobe but for me that's pretty flat so it's a good uh, good fit and seal and uh, the, that's the Vento and the Vento has a detachable cord which uh, the DT1350 does not. And uh, what do they do with the EP? The EP is, uh, Beats EP is also not detachable. So uh, let's look at this uh, P55 Vento. See what that sounds like here. And these are approximate. You know, mileage may vary a little bit. But uh, it has a super strong bass, and I dropped that bass down at 110 hertz, about 8 decibels. I mean, that's a real powerful bass on there. And uh, the rest of it's a little bit ragged, not bad. But uh, that bass is strong and detailed, too. So they have really good drivers in this uh, Vento here. Uh, they had a special sale on them in uh, Hi-Fi Headphones UK for, I don't know, 70 pounds or something like that. Heck of a deal. The original was 200, and they're worth 200, you know, compared to what else is out there. Here is the cost. Uh, let's see, this is the, kind of a, what? no, it's not a cost, this is the Sennheiser, okay, I got uh, cost ear pads and stuck them on here, they're just these little gel uh, foamy ear pads, but uh, they have the um, PX100, PX200, the PX100 and 202, they also have uh, 200, 2i and all that sort of thing, fourth, uh, you know, Apple controls on it. So this is a plain PX100-2, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it says it right on there. There we go, right down here, if I can zoom in on that. PX100-2. Okay, and uh, not a bad headphone, actually. Uh, in spite of the little tiny drivers and everything else, it does a pretty good job. But let's take a look. 
PX102. Oh, well, okay. PX102 lacks a little bit in treble. We're boosting the treble at uh, 4, 5, 6 kilohertz by about 9 decibels. 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, but anyway, uh, so it's, it's uh, dull. And uh, the uh, bass I've boosted at uh, 45, kilo, uh, 45 hertz by about 4 decibels. So it's pretty good in the bass. But it uh, really has uh, some suck out in the treble. Not the best. Here's, uh, I'll move some of this stuff out of the way here. I run out of room. Here we have CNOW uh, SMH. Um, forget, is this the 150 or the 100? No, 1200. Okay, SMH 1200. They also have the SMH 1000 for $100 or thereabouts. This one was $150. I got it from B&H. And it's uh, nice, soft uh, ear pads here. Uh, real nice and soft. Very comfy fit, uh, pretty much around ear for average size ears, and uh, it's a. Uh, it might feel a little flimsy at first because it's not, you know, it doesn't have a heavy duty build, but it uh, looks like it'll hold up for a long time in uh, studio use, which is what they made it for. Kind of a your generic studio headphone. Uh, see now, and it has a um, cable that uh, uses a generic uh, 3.5 millimeter, but it also has a little lock on it. I didn't need the lock, really, but uh, I think you can put any generic cable in there. So let's see what the CNL sound looks like here. And there's my EQ curve on the CNL. You can see how these are all different because they all sound different. But I boosted the bass at 40 hertz by 6 decibels. Did some minor corrections there from about 150 to 250 hertz. And uh, then we did some in the trouble, some boost and some reduction at different frequencies here. So it looks like about plus or minus, so plus five minus three, so about plus or minus four up there, which is almost flagship. So, uh, very good sound to the uh, C now, SMH1200. Here we have a wireless headphone, the uh, Bluetooth, and this is the uh, B&O H4. I've had B&Os before, I had four of the H6s in different colors, and uh, those were corded. This is uh, uh, cordless. The uh, Bluetooth only, as far as I know, and uh, you can also run it wired. There's a little port for that. There's your charging port down here, and the controls are somewhere up here. There they are, the little buttons on there. And those are those work pretty good by feel. Once you find a metal button, then the uh, other ones are pretty easy. This actually performs pretty well as an around ear headphone, although again, you know, it um, gets around the top and the sides, but the bottom will be. Uh, push flat, which is in my in my head works pretty good. But a very nice, very comfortable headphone with a pretty decent sound. Three hundred dollars. That's the lowest price that uh, B&O has. And uh, if you like B&O, they're worth it. But if um, you know you're going to pay more for B&O. So let's see if we can find a curve on this. This is the H4. Da -da 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 -da. H4. This looks right. Yeah, an interesting curve here. We have some uh, uh, boost in the bass, but I turned that down a little bit, which is uh, still good detailed bass. Then I boosted the uh, lower mid range down from about uh, 250 to 600 hertz because it was um, kind of depressed there. I boosted the uh, lower treble or mid treble, maybe around 4 kilohertz a little bit, 3 decibels, but I had to cut quite a bit at. Uh, seven and nine kilohertz because there are some pretty strong peaks up there so uh, it's going to sound a little zippy to you like I think most of the reviews agree with that but that's the BNOH4 here uh, let's go to another uh, cordless headphone uh, Bluetooth this is the Vmoda wireless 2 this is the latest edition of the M100 really which was uh, I called the king of headphones and made number one on Amazon and uh, this is, to me, is a round ear, but it's snug. It's a snug fit. If you've got larger than average size ears, and uh, some people in some markets, apparently, uh, a lot of the population has larger ears. It might be a little too snug and go on ear. How that work out, I don't know. The pads are soft enough that uh, you can get away with that. This has the uh, very famous click-fold mechanism, 
so it uh, folds up into a nice little compact package and uh, for the carry case and again you know you can use a uh, cable with it here and I uh, brought some cables here's my uh, pin sound cable as long as you have a 3.5 millimeter in on one the ear cup in then uh, you can use any generic cable as long as the sleeve fits you might have to get an adapter to if your sleeve's too big but anyway there's the uh, thing sound cable for detachable cords and this is uh, fabric covered and everything real nice and uh, then here's the V-Moda version yeah, V-Moda uh, which comes with the uh, Bluetooth headphone the wireless too and uh, it has a little box uh, there's an extra microphone box right there and then here's the uh, standard microphone box with the uh, control here this particular control is not made for Apple but it works as a start stop and uh, next previous then of course we have the 45 degree angle uh, part of the cable there and this is fabric covered really nice and very durable and all that so uh, and I have custom shields on this uh, wireless 2 and uh, the wireless 2 with the um, Aptex codec is only on the uh, rose gold version, the white version, the black version, or the standard codec, which actually sounds really good. I think for outdoor use, if you're riding the tube or whatever, I think you're going to find that uh, the standard codec works great. It's going to give you all the detail you can hear in a noisy environment. And uh, let's see what else we have here. We have the Blue Microphones Ella. This is quite a beast here. This little guy, um, it has an unusual headband here that uh, folds out like so, one size fits all, and uh, kind of like some of these other headphones that stretch to fit, but this one actually has enough room in it that it stretches to fit better than uh, a lot of those other ones with less pressure. It is a little bit heavy though because it's metal and it's uh, built like a tank, and uh, it uh, has a detachable cable. And uh, this cable came with it, a short cable with a 3.5 millimeter adapter, and then they have a longer cable also. And this particular one has a control box with uh, volume up, down, and uh, start, stop, compatible with Apple. Blue Microphones Ella, E L L A. A really wonderful headphone. I really like it. Although the sound is quite similar, in my opinion, to the. Um, um, Audio Quest uh, Nighthawk, which had a depressed lower treble. Let's bring up the Ella real quick here. Okay, here's the Ella. I had to boost the low bass down around uh, 40 hertz by about six decibels. A little weak down there, and uh, but that lower treble and I, the higher trebles kind of you know uh, 10 kilohertz is not really down that much compared to the rest of it, but it's the mid treble or the lower treble down around 4 kilohertz. It's the, the weakest. And uh, like I said, the Nighthawk reminds me of that. And if you read the early reviews of the Nighthawk, you'll see they uh, validate that. A lot of users talk about that. I know they had a phone that's very similar in having a weak uh, mid treble in the presence region. Is the uh, $1,000 Focal e Lear, which I had. Uh, anyway. That's how they sound. Here's a, a real beast here. This is the Grado PS1000E. When the PS1000 came out, people loved it. When the E came out, they expected it to be better, but a lot of people were shocked by the, the way that it sounded. It was, uh, this is very heavy. If you put this on your head, you need to sit really still. You move around any and that weight will just shake your head. Uh, this is very heavy. But comfortable to use because there's no pressure against your head. You just you just kind of set these on your ears, and uh, there you go. It's uh, it's open air, and uh, got a really heavy duty cable. That's another reason why you just and it's not detachable. You sit very still when you're using that headphone, and uh, costs seventeen hundred dollars. They have a new edition that's twenty seven hundred dollars, and uh, presumably that would have to be a whole lot better. Uh, God, who knows. Anyway, people love their Grados. I've had a few of them. Oops. See if I got that curve right. This is it. And so I boosted the low base around 40. I cut the uh, upper base around 100 and... I don't know what that is right there. 170. I cut it quite a bit. And then I really cut down around uh, 
3.5 kilohertz there, and another big reduction around, uh, looks like about 7 kilohertz. Big peaks there. So a uh, really um, interesting kind of sound that uh, improves one heck of a lot with uh, parametric equalizer. Parametric equalizer. Okay, let's see. Oh, here's only half. Now the guys on uh, Mass Drop, the trolls out there, were uh, really uh, beating up on this one, saying that uh, this guy gave a great review to AirPods or EarPods or whatever it was. And uh, But you know, these things can sound mighty good with uh, equalization. Just about as good as a uh, good IEM. In-ear monitor, earphone, whatever you want to call them, the ear canal types. Uh, let's get that out here. Apple AirPods. My EQ curve is a little bit radical here. I've got some uh, boost down here in the low bass, which which the, the low bass boost down here doesn't make it, uh, f you know, have a really great bass for EDM or something like that. Uh, great for most music. But I have a huge cut here in the uh, treble, centered around uh, 5 kilohertz. Big cut around 5 kilohertz. To me, it's fairly bright, but you may get more variance with this than other uh, headphones here compared to me because of the fact that it's inside the ear and it's very close to the ear canal. It doesn't go into the ear canal, but it's very close to the ear canal, and some people have more differences there. But uh, generally, I think that uh, curve is representative of what we get, you know, fairly bright and um, lacking bass, but uh, still, once equalized, darn good sound. Very good for outdoors if uh, you don't mind the fact that there's no isolation there. All right, here's another one. Special from uh, Mastrop of all people. They sold this exclusively. This is a Fisher uh, 10th Anniversary Edition FA011. And uh, they have other Fishers there. They're made by the Kennerton or whatever in uh, Russia. This is actually made in Russia. Let's see if we can see that plate on here. St. Petersburg, I believe it is. Yeah, made in St. Petersburg, handcrafted, whatever. This is uh, interesting on a lot of levels. Again, uh, because it was Mastrop and uh, tried to go out there and talk about it to the people who were trying to oversell it. Uh, they uh, were, uh, uh, you know, trolling and uh, being very abusive. And, of course, Master uh, didn't do anything about that. So uh, beware of the, uh, uh, you know, their forums and everything else, but their sales have uh, been reliable and uh, product uh, gets out uh, on time, if one to two months on time is, uh, you know, on time. But anyway, this one detaches with the typical uh, XLR connectors, mini XLRs. Uh, cable is very heavy duty. It feels like, uh, it feels almost like steel cable. It's uh, pretty heavy duty. And then this part, of the lower part of the cable here is kind of like a Grado cable, except uh, almost like a steel weave instead of uh, rubber. It's a really, really strong cable. And uh, it's long enough that, uh, you know, this is, I think it's strictly for indoor use. Uh, this is a 3.5 millimeter, and I'm pretty sure it came with a quarter inch adapter. But uh, the fit is, uh, you know, the one size fits all, like the AKG K712 and some of those other ones. And, uh, which is okay for me, it fits me all right. There's uh, just enough rotation in the ear cups a little bit to uh, fit my head. And uh, the other thing, about this is that, uh, you know, this headphone, I'd advise anybody who's not accustomed to uh, full-size uh, headphones, especially the old-fashioned variety that uh, before Sennheiser started producing their, um, whatever it is, HD 600, 650, and all that, uh, they, uh, it, it, um, the pads are just a little bit stiff, and so I think a lot of people who just, like I say, aren't accustomed to this sort of thing, they might feel... Uh, too much pressure for this. I think it's not comfortable. But trust me, uh, most people, when they're serious about sound, they'll get used to it. And uh, it seems to be made very well. It has a heck of a cable. The, uh, it's beautiful to look at, and uh, especially in good light. And, uh, you know, it's a custom anniversary edition. Might be worth something someday. I like it, but it does not sound. This is the... Um, Again, a Fisher FA011, 10th Anniversary Edition. So let's uh, get down here to FA011. And here's what we look like. Ooh, so I've uh, boosted the low bass just a little bit, four decibels. 
and cut uh, about 90 hertz. I cut it by about four decibels. No big deal. Um, now I've got a boost in here at about a little over two kilohertz, 2400, because uh, it's a little bit distant sounding. It's not a bad thing. But I've got a, a cut here of about five decibels at uh, four, five, six kilohertz or six and a half kilohertz. And uh, so I don't know, you may feel that peak a little bit uh, if it's indoor listening, you know, I don't know. But uh, still, uh, I've got a review on it. I've got a review on all these individual reviews on uh, YouTube, so you can find all those out there. But anyway, that's a look at the Fisher FA-011. Uh, my favorites in here, of course, would be... Uh, the King of Headphones, the latest update to the King of Headphones M100, which is the wireless 2, and uh, they've even improved the sound a little bit. I think this is just fantastic. I love this. And people comment on it all the time. They just think that's a great looking headphone. And uh, next to that, uh, the uh, this one here, oddly enough, the $700 uh, Blue Ella, Blue Microphones Ella. I just love this headphone. Uh, but again, that's for indoor listening. Uh, when you sit fairly still, uh, you won't want to put something that big on your head and try to move around a bunch. So anyway, there we go. That's my um, that's my quickie little review here, mass headphone review, the first one I've done in a long time. Uh, I try to give you a look at some amps and how some of this stuff is used. And uh, there you go. Thank you very much.